If you're looking to upgrade your video quality for your Zoom conference calls, Skype, or WebEx, this is the Logitech 4K Pro webcam, which might be the upgrade for you. In this video, I'm gonna test out the quality of the Logitech Brio or the Logitech 4K Pro webcam, as well as what you would actually see from the receiving end using this webcam. Okay, so we just saw the, a little quick unboxing there of the Logitech 4K Pro webcam, aka Logitech Brio. The reason why I say aka Logitech Brio is because A, it looks like Logitech Brio of where this is made from, as well as when you connect it to your computer, it's gonna show up as the Brio. So right now, this whole video is being recorded by the Logitech Brio. I will be doing some processing and editing to this video for the color accuracy. So the disclaimer is what you see is not necessarily gonna be out of the box. I'm gonna minimize as much editing when it comes to color as much as possible. And I'm also gonna be recording and editing this for a 1080p output. So what am I using for recording software? I'm actually using OBS. I'm using the recording feature from here. And funny enough, when I compare the, the output on my screen versus let's say Photo Booth or even QuickTime when I'm doing recording, the colors are just a little bit off. So I'm unsure on how that will look. That being said, the other recording is going to be a screen capture recording, which will be what your audience would see and to really evaluate, is this a upgrade worthwhile if you're really gonna be only using it for Zoom, WebEx, Team, Microsoft Teams as a elevated or upgraded video webcam to elevate your conference calls working from home. So Logitech Brio is very good webcam, it is considered a premium webcam in context in comparison to Logitech's other offerings. They offer a lot of webcams that are cheaper than this particular webcam. So this is on the higher end or premium. So it does promote that it's 4K, 4K I would say in maybe recording and how it looks on your computer. The output, if you're using this as a webcam for those Logitech, uh, sorry, Microsoft Teams, Zoom video conferencing platforms will only max out at 1080p at 60 frames per second, which I think in 2022 should be the standard 1080p, regardless if it's 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. This particular webcam does come with this built-in, they call it Ring Light 3. Well, you know, if I turn this off, <laughs> and if I were, and, and you can imagine this, this is the front light, the ring light three, I don't know how much help that's really bringing it to the shot. So I'm putting back my, my key light. So first a disclaimer, as you see these recordings, it is going to depend on your environment. You may not get the same results that I'm getting because I am in a room with no windows. I don't have any daylight. And the quality, I believe, is going to look a lot better when you have natural light or better lighting. So for this shot, I'm in my office in front of my computer and I have a softbox uh, at like 40% and I have a hair light here 
which is at a lower percentage, probably maybe 20%. And the color temperature that I'm running on the softbox here is 4,700. And this one is, I believe, a little bit higher. I, I tried to match it to 4700 that may not be the case though so i'm just giving you some context that your results or the quality that you see may be better or may be worse depending on your environment the the picture that you're seeing right now i haven't done anything to obs except for add the logitech 4k pro webcam as a video source now this is also not necessarily out of the box quality I did make some changes because I was playing with the software. You can tweak the look and feel of your shot to your liking. That being said, this is a plug and play device. So when you, you don't need to download any software for the webcam to work and plugging it in out of the box and I didn't record it. If I were to compare it to other webcams, even if I'm looking at the Logitech offerings of webcams, honestly, out of the box, this isn't the best. It's not number one is what I'm saying. I think from my experience, looking at other webcams from Logitech out of the box, plug and play, set it and forget it. There has been better color accuracy or better look and feel that I like <clears throat> from cheaper offerings from Logitech. Now with this, you do have the added advantage of downloading software to tweak it from Logitech. And it's actually confusing because when you go to the Logitech's website, there are like three or four different softwares that you can download. And I did download originally the Logitech Capture and I got an error on my Mac. So it may just be incompatible with the Mac Mini M1, but it, errored, it, it gave me an error. And then I did download the Logitech G Hub and I just really just wanted it to work. And I, and I read up on Logitech G Hub and integrating other Logitech products. So I try, I, I, I think I installed it, but then I uninstalled it right away. And while I was trying to figure out what was going on with Logitech capture, I did look at their marketing material and realize the Logitech tune was the software to use to tweak the the settings and adjust it to the look and feel that you want. So the software that you, once it's installed, this is on my Mac Mini M1 and it gives you an opportunity to sync with your calendar, which I haven't. And then I've already, when you, when you plug it in, it will automatically recognize whatever webcam that is connected to your computer. So Logitech Brio is here and gives you the preview. So one kind of con about this software is that it only gives you a small preview window. You can't make this larger, which in reality, if you really want to tweak it to look and feel, I think the best way to do this is to open the software that you're going to be using like Zoom or Microsoft Teams and have it streaming through there. Don't necessarily have to connect to a call and tweak it at the same time, just so you have a larger preview window. That being said, let's say you didn't do that. This is the preview window. You can get your, your rule of thirds grid on here as well. I'm just going to turn that off and then you have your field of view. So this has a wide field of view with 90 degrees. So as you can see, now you can see the hair light in the picture. Uh, I have a little <clears throat> um, side table here as well. You can go 78, which is what I'm using right now, 78 degrees. And then you can really pop in to 65 degrees. Now what you could do is you can go to the widest angle. You can kind of zoom in. And then here, let's put our rule of thirds, get me in there. And then now you can kind of like move to the perspective that you want, which is, I guess it's kind of cool. And if you were going to be using that for zoom calls may not be an advantage. I would think if you're going to use this more than just zoom calls, you can really play around with this and get in the look and feel of, of the recording or streaming, uh, of what you want. And so 
for zoom, I literally just set it to 78 degrees. I'm about an arm length away from the webcam. It's just right on top of my monitor. And then you can go to image adjustments. And this is where you can really tweak it. So autofocus is on. So that's where you get like, here you go, kind of like zooms in. It's pretty quick, right? Um, auto exposure is off. So I think out of the box that would be on. So as you can see in this recording, this is what it looks like when you turn on the autofocus. And then for me, I kind of just changed it and I think I have my exposure at 15%. But this is the auto exposure. Let me know in the comments what you like better, the auto exposure or the manual exposure. And then HDR. So you can have HDR on just to get dynamic range. You can turn it off as well. I think the HDR does a little bit of a smoothing effect. And I just left it on. I didn't really care either way. And then now we have some other options here. Auto white balance. So I have that off. So I kind of just tweaked this to what I wanted. But if I do auto white balance, I don't know. You tell me. How does it look? Again, let me know in the comments. So if I was going to put everything default, I guess it would be auto exposure and the auto white balance. So putting those together, this is probably the out of the box view on the quality that you would get out of the box. So if I turn off my auto exposure and I turn off auto white balance, here it gives you an opportunity to tweak this a little bit. So I'm just gonna tweak this down to, I think I had it at 4,500. Even though my light, my soft box is set at 4,700, there's always a little bit of, of a difference, not really consistent or accurate in my opinion. But we'll go, let's go 4,500. Okay, I'm happy there. Brightness, I think at 55%, sure, that's fine. Contrast is at 50%, I think black looks black, I'm good with that saturation you know that that's the thing i feel like in the preview window i look more on the red but if i just turn the saturation down to 50 percent, i think that that's pretty good sharpness i have it set to 65 percent i mean you can you can kind of raise this up to get a little bit more sharp but you know what let's go 70 percent. let's go 70 percent. so now we're at 70 percent and then you could add filters. I don't touch this at all. I mean, let's, I'm using this, this video is specifically for using this for Zoom and, and video conferencing. So you can play around with it. So the whole idea here of showing you this is that you can tweak it to your liking. For me, I'm not able to tweak it enough to my liking for all things. I mean, even for Zoom or Microsoft Teams, I personally think it does the job for the receiving end. Is it better than your built-in camera? 100%. I'm not going to tell you that, it, that it's not. Is the highest tier for consumer webcams from Logitech, which is this 4K Pro webcam, it may not be, no, I, I'll be I'll be transparent. It wouldn't be my first choice if that's the only thing you're gonna be using this for. So now we're gonna switch and see what this looks like being on a Zoom call from the receiving end. Okay, so now we are recording in Zoom. So I'm doing a screen recording on my computer on the Mac Mini M1 through the Logitech. So this is what you would see on your own computer. And then I also have this hooked up to another Zoom meeting which is being recorded. So you can see what the other end is receiving. So my output is I believe at the highest quality. It's not gonna be, I'm gonna assume it's not gonna be 4K. It should be at least 1080p. Are they receiving it in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second? Hopefully they're receiving it in the full 1080p, 60 frames per second. So this is the quality. I don't know, you be the judge. I'm just gonna kind of quickly look and, you know, obviously it's gonna be a little bit degraded now. The quality, I think, is still going to be better, like I said, 100% better 
than the built-in webcam that's on your computer for your audience. The question is, can you get the similar look and feel from a Logitech webcam that is 1080p, doesn't have that 4K capability? I'm gonna let you be the judge. I really wanted to show you what it would look like on the receiving end. Most, if not all, actually all this recording is being done through the Logitech Brio outside or the Logitech 4K Pro webcam outside of the screen grabs or the screen recordings. So if you found value in this video, you know what to do. If you wanna see more videos like this, click here. If you wanna see my latest videos, click here. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.